Hello everyone, I'm Mike and welcome back to Writing in the Ozarks. Today we've got some big news to dive into. Harley Davidson is set to move some motorcycle production to Thailand in 2025. I have five things you need to know about this decision. Let's break it down. One, what Harley Davidson announced. Okay, I want to read to you what Harley Davidson spokesperson has announced regarding this issue in an official statement. Harley Davidson is proud to design and develop all of its iconic motorcycles in the U.S. As a global company, Harley Davidson also maintains an international manufacturing footprint. Like many of its peers, as part of our overall manufacturing optimization strategy, Harley Davidson is to temporarily transition the production of its non-core Revolution Max powertrain equipped models, which are the Pan America, Sportster S, and Nightsters, to its existing manufacturing facility in Thailand for model year 25. This move optimizes production capacity for Grand American Touring and other core product segments such as Softail and Trike motorcycles at the York PA facility. Additionally, building on our DOE grant, as part of this move, we are investing an additional $9 million into our U.S. manufacturing facilities to focus and strengthen our U.S. manufacturing capabilities and capacity for our core products. Two, why Thailand? Harley-Davidson, a name synonymous with American muscle, American iron, and freedom on two wheels, is making a major shift in its production strategy. In 2025, the company will relocate a portion of its motorcycle production to Thailand. But why Thailand? And what does this move signify? Harley-Davidson has been a staple in the motorcycle industry for over a century, with just celebrating its 121st anniversary. It has a reputation of being built in American. It's a symbol, as much as anything else, of freedom and pride in America. The company has faced numerous challenges in recent years and in recent weeks. These include rising production costs, changing consumer preferences, and intense global competition. Not to mention the recent call for boycotting over supporting DEI and woke policies. Now, Thailand has emerged as a strategic location for global manufacturing due to its favorable economic conditions. Lower labor costs, tax incentives, and a well-established manufacturing infrastructure, making it an attractive option for Harley-Davidson. Harley-Davidson originally opened the Thailand plant in 2018 in response to a 31% tariff for importing motorcycles into the European Union. Till now, motorcycles assembled in Thailand were strictly for the European and Asian markets. Motorcycles sold in North America have always been assembled in North America. This is about to change for 2025. I believe the move to Thailand is based on a strategic plan to reduce costs on these Revolution Max Pacific models. The question is, will this reduce costs and those savings be passed on to consumers? Or will this simply allow stakeholders to get more profit because there'll be a higher margin on the production costs of these bikes now that they may have lower labor costs and less expensive manufacturing and assembly related costs. Harley-Davidson could potentially increase their profits by reducing labor and manufacturing costs, or they could pass the savings on to the consumer. That's yet to be seen. For many fans and loyalists, Harley-Davidson's heritage of being an American motorcycle brand manufactured here in America has been crucial to its success. It's part of its brand identity and why so many people are loyal to the brand. The move to Thailand has sparked concern about the legacy of Harley-Davidson, and American workers who are employed for Harley-Davidson are concerned about their jobs moving overseas. While the move may help Harley-Davidson stay competitive, it's a tough pill to swallow for union workers. This has been a part of this American company's manufacturing history and story. Union leaders have vowed to fight this every way possible. A Harley spokesperson did state that the transition will not have an impact on its U.S. facilities. When we look at the models affected, this could explain if this is really the case. Three, why these models? As I said before, 
Harley Davidson is only moving some production to Thailand, and it's specifically the Revolution Max powered motorcycles. For those of you not familiar with the lineup, this is the sport and adventure touring. The Pan America Special is the only adventure touring motorcycle in that category. And in the sport category, we have the Sportster S, the Nightster, and the Nightster Special. So we're only talking about four models. We used to have a base model Pan America, but that's been dropped from the lineup. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Nightster base model drop from the lineup as well for similar reasons. The Special is just a better bike, and I don't think there's enough differentiation in price to keep people from stepping up to the Special once they understand the value and the added features that you get with the Special model. I'm assuming any new Revolution Max models that might be launched in 2025 would also be produced in Thailand based on this decision for manufacturing. The Sportster S and the Nightster truly have not seen a high adoption rate here in the US. Maybe they're doing better overseas in these other markets than here in the US, but they actually represent a small segment of the overall sales of Harley-Davidson, and we're about to talk about that. The Pan America launched in 2021 has seen a much higher adoption rate and was in fact the best selling adventure touring motorcycle in 2021. If we were to go back and look at the sales numbers for the Pan America in 2021 and compare them to 2023, we'll see the numbers have dropped to about half. Now the sport category is harder to determine because in 2021, we still have the traditional evolution sportsters in the mix of units shipped but those were phased out as 2022 only had a model or two of those left, and that was the last year of the traditional Sportster. So during 2021, the numbers are a mix between Revolution Max Motors and Evo traditional Sportsters, but in 2023, we only have the Revolution Max numbers, and they are significantly less than they were in 2021. If I look at all the units sold in 2023, and then compare what percentage of the total the Revolution Max family makes up, it's only about 13% of the total worldwide sales for Harley-Davidson. And if half of those motorcycles were sold outside of the US, this is only 6% of their total production that they're removing from the US manufacturing facilities. Four, consumer impact. So what does this mean for you, the rider, the Harley-Davidson customer? It's likely that this production change could lead to a pricing change and availability change, as these motorcycles will now have to be imported in from overseas. The pricing change is yet to be seen. We have the potential to lower the price or for stockholders to simply make more money. And that's a big concern for me. If Harley-Davidson is making this move, they have to make the price lower to combat the negativity that is based with them moving production outside of the US for these models. Maybe if that had happened, people would accept that, but I'm not sure that they will. And if it's only temporary, can they reduce the cost for just one year? I mean, that doesn't really make sense either. But if it turns out their plan is to actually do this long-term, then they definitely have to reduce the cost and pass the savings on to the consumers. If the pricing doesn't change, I will be very disappointed in Harley-Davidson. I feel they have to pass that savings on to consumers. If I was buying a Nightster next year, I would not pay the same price for one made in Thailand as one made in the US the year before. Let's do a little comparison. The Honda Rebel 1100 sells for around $9,600 MSRP, and the base Harley-Davidson Nightster sells for around $12,000 currently. I rode both, and I think the Nightster is better ergonomically for me personally. Now the torque is nearly identical, but the Nicer does have about six more horsepower than the Rebel. Based on the fact that it does all this with 100 cc's less, you could say the Nicer has better performance. The weight is almost identical. Based on the value of you get from performance, I could see maybe the Nicer being a little more expensive than the Rebel, maybe 10, 10, five, but that price has to come down from 12. If you're gonna make this bike manufactured or assembled overseas, then you're gonna to have to be competitive on price, craftsmanship, quality, everything with those other metric brands that are made overseas. And this is including the Honda Rebel. I'm afraid the backlash from this is gonna drive even more customers to Indian Motorcycle Scout lineup that might have considered the Nightster before. The Indian Scout lineup's actually doing pretty well in taking over a large share of that market segment 
So Harley Davidson has to be careful. They're pushing potentially even more customers over to the Indian Motorcycle Scout lineup. Five, accountability. Now you may be wondering how accountability fits into this. Well, I was really mad when I first read this about the possibility of production moving overseas. I'm a little less angry about it now that I've looked at the numbers and I see it's such a small percentage of their manufacturing total of worldwide sales, but I still have my reservations. When Harley-Davidson closed the plant in Kansas City in 2018, they said that they would not make motorcycles in Thailand for sale in the US, and now they're changing their mind. I know they say it's temporary, but they define temporary. I want someone to come out from Harley-Davidson and actually be accountable. Yes, I want them to say how long this is gonna last. I want them to be transparent. I wanna be able to hold, whether it's the CEO or the COO or whoever, accountable if they change their mind. If they change their mind in the future, I wanna be able to hold someone publicly accountable for this decision. Somebody needs to be transparent and accountable so that when or if this change does not revert back to US production, we know who we can go after as consumers because we're unhappy about this. Let me know how you feel in the comments about this and if the price were to come down, does that affect how you feel on this topic? Make sure you leave me a comment down below. Y'all stay safe, keep on riding, and we'll see you in the next one.